Hello, welcome to SportWorks Kingdom Moments. Hope you're doing great tonight. We are moving along here in John chapter 12. We're going to look at verses 20 through 26 tonight. We're in an ESV Bible again. Uh, just excited that it'd be able to come and bring God's Word and enjoy some time together. Um, and we're just thankful for today. Uh, in the recruiting process with our athletics it, at some point, they're going to hear a talk of, about how much is required and how much is demanded. It tends not to be on the front end. I, I recently, when talking with a young man on our baseball program, told me about a conversation he had with one of the coaches who recruited him. And he actually asked, coming out of junior college, uh, whether they ran very much. And he was told, no, no, we, we don't do very much of that stuff at all. Uh, and honestly, we, we, we condition very hard. It's part of the character of this team from his coach, from his coach when he was a player. Uh, it's kind of always, for the 22 years I've been here, that's always been a big part of things, that we're going to out-condition mentally, physically, emotionally, within the character to be ready. But but the fact that, that he was kind of told, he, he said he was at a practice one day and said, Coach, remember when you told me we didn't run? And it's like, yeah, I remember it exactly. <laughs> And he questioned why why he essentially lied to him. He said, well, I didn't think he'd come if I told you all that. So uh, maybe there's wisdom in that. Uh, they obviously knew the kid and his character would, would adjust to it or they wouldn't have wanted him here. Um, so so I, I, don't, I don't think they make a habit of that, but but found it kind of funny. But but on this day, we, we have some folks who had some interest in Jesus. And they come to Philip, who immediately grabs Andrew, we don't know a lot about these guys when it comes uh, to them as disciples. There's, there's a few. We get a lot of information. Some we don't get very much. You know, Andrew was the first one who kind of found and identified Jesus and runs and gets his brother. He had been following John the Baptist. So these guys were, were somewhat looking. Uh, we, we know that, that Philip and, and Andrew uh, carry on a ministry to, to the Greeks after this, but it's some Greeks, so some Gentile folks who happen to be Greek, uh, jump into this story. So let me let me jump right in and then we're going to see what Jesus says to them. It says, Now among those who went up to worship at the feast, we're getting ready for Passover, were some Greeks. And I guess they could have somehow been, I don't know if they could have been Jewish descent and, and be Greek. But um, So these came to Philip, who was from Bethsaida in Galilee, and asked him, Sir, we wish to see Jesus. And, and we believe Philip had had you know at least one one of his parents was was Greek and and so it, it was kind of fitting whether it was appearance that they sought Philip out, whether it's Philip's ability with a language, but Philip immediately went and told Andrew and Andrew and Philip went and told Jesus so so we go to Philip who then immediately says I'm going to get some help out of Andrew, I'm not coming to Jesus alone about this you you come with me the two of them go. And they, and, and they tell Jesus, hey, these folks want, want to meet you. They, they want to get to know who you are. And, and so this would be the, essentially the, the first talk that these folks would hear. It says, the hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Hey, that, that, that we can hold on its own and have a whole message on that, that it's, it's time for him to complete what he came here to do, and that is to, to die for the sins of all mankind and, and to lay his life down and, and then for Jesus uh, to take it back up again because he had authority to lay it down, authority to take it back up in, in order that we might be brought to God. And we've been kind of talking about that and it's what we're, we're about here. So so we're at least, you know, we looked at the triumphal entry. I'm assuming may, maybe we're on to Monday here. And, and so, you know, by Thursday, late in the night, he's arrested. So, so I mean, it is almost here. Then he says, truly, truly, which again, kind of coaches way of getting your attention and getting your eyes. And certainly it is for Jesus. When Jesus says, truly, truly, what we ought to immediately snap to, give our attention, dig deep, make sure we understand what he's about to say. And he says, I say to you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains alone. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. And so all of my farming folks out there, and of you have a gardener, you, you put a seed, the seed's got to die in order to burst forth to produce this plant, which is ultimately then going to produce fruit. Jesus is talking about the fact that he's, then again, he's going to lay his life down. If he doesn't, if he were just to continue here and, and do the things that they kind of are hoping a Messiah is going to do, uh, that, that we would have never been saved. It, it, 
Maybe the Jewish people had had something for a time, but it, it wouldn't have ultimately brought about the things God had intended from the beginning to bring about, that Jesus has to die in order to bear fruit. And, and I think there's there's some premonition then, then to us as well that this isn't home, that the fruit that God's looking to produce in our life is going to come at the death of our flesh, the death of the things of this world, the, the death of the things that we kind of cling to. Am I willing to trust him and to put myself aside? Because he's going to go on in the next verse. There's like three packed verses right in a row here. And so verse 25 says, Whoever loves his life loses it, and whoever hates his life in this world will keep it for eternal life. That there is a letting go. Again, Paul talks about we're not citizens of, of this place, that, that our citizenship is in heaven, it's with God, that we're strangers and aliens while we're here. Am I willing to take my hand and let go of all the things that, that this world has to offer? It's comforts, it's riches, it's all the things that promises will give us fulfillment that we go all the way back to the woman at the well that, that we know does not end up taking away our quench and our doesn't quench our thirst, doesn't take away our drive to want more. The richest men in the world were asked, you know, Rockefeller, I think it was the one that was asked, how much money is enough? said a little bit more yeah it's just kind of the way things go that we drive for more and more when we see some of the wealthy right now trying to gain more power over how the whole world operates like they have all the money they could ever need so so there's still a hunger or something else that, that they think now they're smarter and, and more equipped to decide who kind of should should live and who shouldn't verse 26 if anyone serves me he must follow me Again, that's pretty straightforward, I would think, to us. You've played follow the leader. To follow someone is to follow. If they do it, then you do it. If Jesus turns left, then we turn left. If he says no to what's over there in bucket A, then, then we say no to bucket A, and, and we, we go to where he tells us to go. Will you trust him? He says, again, if anyone serves me, you must follow me. And where I am, there will my servant be also. And if anyone serves me, the Father will honor him. And there's the great promise at the end, that, that if, if we follow, we die to ourselves, fruit will come, we'll, we'll be the right citizenship, and we'll be the sheep that follow Jesus, that will produce a fruit, that, that will honor Jesus. And, and in the end, if, if we're with Jesus, serving with him, then the Father's going to honor Jesus on our behalf as well. And we get caught up in that honor too. Not that it's about us at all, it's about Jesus. But we got to be with him. We can't say we believe it and not be with them. We, we can't, I mean, you can't win follow the leader unless you're following the leader. You, you can't, there, there has to be a deal in our life where we begin to look like him, act like him. We started a message long ago that if it waddles like a duck and quacks like a duck and, and everything else, then it's probably a duck. And, and there are things that Jesus has said that if you're mine, these are the things that, that you will look like. So for these Greeks who've just met Jesus, they've just been given, man, a, a powerful recruiting talk. And, and I don't know that they fully get it. It seems like they want to. And, and I'm guessing that they probably did that God had brought them. And they're ready to say, okay, sign me up, whatever it takes. I hope that's our heart tonight. I hope that our heart, we, we jump into other things like that. I hope our heart jumps in to want more of Jesus that says, whatever it takes, Jesus, I want you. You're the, you're the hope that, that I seek, and you are the water that I know that if I drink, I won't thirst again, and the food that if I eat, I won't hunger again. You are the one that will give fulfillment. I pray that that's what we chase after, and that that's what we share with others. Well, we, we've gone a long way to kind of soft pedal what it is to be a follower of Jesus. We, we've kind of decided recruitment, recruitment needs to look more like the story I told you, that we just won't really tell the truth. People are want to hear the truth. People want to follow the real Jesus. They, they don't want, I don't know why you would play games with that. I don't know why you'd want a softer version of that. I, I want all that, that Jesus asks, and, and I want to be his fully. And I pray that we would help encourage each other, just like teammates do, to push and to pull and to come along and all that. But let me pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you and love you. Lord, we thank you for this talk at this point. Obviously, Jesus doesn't have a lot of time, and, and so he's not going to mince words. But, but, Lord, we don't know how much time we have either. So give us hearts and mouths to speak, to proclaim the truth of who you are and the hope that we have. And if our hope is in something else, Lord, change our hearts. 
grab us, shake us, that, that we would see you clearly for who you are, that we would follow you with a reckless abandon for all that we're worth, knowing that time is short, you have our days, and we can't wait to be with you for an eternity. But, but while we have breath, that we would absolutely serve you, follow you, be willing to die to the comforts that we have, and to chase and make you known. But again, Lord, I pray you would encourage my friends tonight, that you would be moving and wooing in our hearts and drawing us to yourself. And for those that know you, they just, they'd want more. And for those that aren't there yet, that you'd bring them a step closer until uh, they become your sheep and follow your voice. But again, we thank you and love you and give you the praise, glory, and honor now, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. I thank you all a ton, and I just pray you have an absolutely great night.